My name is Knut Kravinsky. I'm a university professor and I'm uh, also a filmmaker. I made a film about one of my topics, which is the what we call cultural landscapes. Cultural landscapes are man-made landscapes and they are very old and they are highly diverse. And they are disintegrating today because of industrial agriculture and abandonment. Example of a cultural landscape around here? Any region have uh, all agricultural landscapes where with small scale farming and a diversity of fields, hedgerows, pastures and so on. And this diversity creates a habitat diversity and a biodiversity. In, in Norway the mountain farming areas are typical cultural landscapes. Coastal uh, heathland is a is cultural landscape and traditional agricultural landscape. In the US the, the term is used very much for parks. That's also why while uh, in Europe it's very much for the agriculture. And for instance in Asia we have very, very ancient terraced uh, rice production cultural landscapes. Starting with the Industrial Revolution, create another attitude after the uh, Second World War. Large scale transformation took place, which ended up with uh, monoculture, pesticides and uh, artificial fertilizer. It required very intensive farming and you uh, destroyed the ancient landscape and created new modern industrial landscapes. See this as a culture, this new landscape? If they were stable, they will uh, develop into, but they are constantly changing and nature need time to adapt. The old landscapes were very stable, man kept them stable. I mean, burning is a very typical technique. The whole savanna landscape is, uh, is a burnt landscape. Presently we forbid this burning and then uh, changes take place. All the Mediterranean uh, catastrophic fires is simply because they haven't maintained uh, their landscapes by fire in the winter. Uh, you small scale fires in the winter, keep the land open and then you don't get the catastrophic fires in winter. Possibly because of the corporations that there has been this change, whereas before it was more, people had more of a personal relationship with the land they lived on. It's astonishing how large part of the world's food production is a very small number of huge companies that don't like competition from small scale farming. Food we eat travel over very, very long distances instead of being produced locally. The region has a very mono production, and certain crops make it cheap, as the market forces say for the customer, but actually it's to make a high, high profit. We first produced a DVD that has been distributed to schools and cultural institutions, museums, landscapes, parks and so on, and screening the film on festivals worldwide. Yep. And um, we are then also marketed to towards television and the cost. As an intellectual, how have you found dealing with the media? Interesting. Any word for me to make film? I'm definitely a profession in itself to market it. If you have a good film, then it's it's possible to get through, but it's it's a lot of work. It's a challenge. I decided to make my own film in my own way, not to do co-production with any broadcaster. It cut me off from using their distribution network. On the side, I got the chance to make the film the way I like it, very independent. For commercial use, I would like to be notified and make special deals. DVD, for instance, is uh, is there uh, with a sign of freely copying. Southern Europe have uh, taken advantage to copy for distributing to school. And they, on the internet, there is uh, everything you need, the label, the cover, the booklet, everything is there for, for them, so they can just copy and distribute. Oh, my own You're producer and distribution.